April 24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 4 from the New Testament. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, the priest and the commander of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to them, angry because they were teaching the people and announcing in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. So they seized them and put them in jail until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had listened to the message believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. On the next day, the rulers, elders, and experts in the law came together in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others who were members of the high priest's family. After making Peter and John stand in their midst, they began to inquire, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, replied, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today for a good deed done to a sick man, by what means this man was healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, this man stands before you healthy. This Jesus is a stone that was rejected by you, the builders, that has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among people by which we must be saved. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and discovered that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized these men had been with Jesus. And because they saw the man who had been healed standing with them, they had nothing to say against this. But when they had ordered them to go outside the council, they began to confer with one another, saying, What should we do with these men? For it is plain to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable miraculous sign has come about through them, and we cannot deny it. But to keep this matter from spreading any further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. And they called them in and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Whether it is right before God to obey you rather than God, you decide. For it is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them further, they released them, for they could not find how to punish them on account of the people, because they were all praising God for what had happened. For the man on whom this miraculous sign of healing had been performed was over 40 years old. When they were released, Peter and John went to their fellow believers and reported everything the high priest and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices to God with one mind and said, Master of all, you who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and everything that is in them, who said by the Holy Spirit, through your servant David, our forefather, why do the nations rage and the people plot foolish things? The kings of the earth stood together and the rulers assembled together against the Lord and against his Christ. For indeed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel assembled together in this city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed to do as much as your power and your plan had decided beforehand would happen. And now, Lord, pay attention to their threats and grant to your servants to speak your message with great courage, while you extend your hand to heal and to bring about miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God courageously. The group of those who believed were of one heart and mind. And no one said that any of his possessions were his own, but everything was held in common. With great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was on them all. For there was no one needy among them, because those who were owners of land or houses were selling them and bringing the proceeds from the sales and placing them at the apostles' feet. The proceeds were distributed to each as anyone had need. So Joseph, a Levite, who was a native of Cyprus, called by the apostles Barnabas, which is translated son of encouragement, 
sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and placed it at the apostles' feet. God, I have read this before about how Peter and John were asked not to speak or teach about Jesus. And they pretty much told him to take a flying leap (laughs) and said, you're going to have to talk to God about that one. I've read this over and over and over again, but, but this time just with everything that's going on in this world, that's already happening to us. Not just that people bristle on Facebook and Twitter and things like that when we talk about you, but laws are being passed in this, in this country that allow sin more and more and more to happen legally. Major search engines and major sites out there are actually taking down Christian content. And we have people who are in positions of power, including the President of the United States, saying that they're Christian. When they're endorsing all these different things that go against what you say, you expect of us God it's starting to be a very scary time I'm not just talking about with world events but I'm I'm talking about for your servants people around the world are actually murdered for their faith and I I know this has been going on for a long time but it seems to be getting more and more severe the thought of worshiping you causes so much anger and fury in other people that they desire to control those situations. They they do it through laws and they do it through um, bullying and they do it through high pressure tactics and they do it through power and control. And then I go on to the next part where Peter and John go back and, and talk to their fellow believers and they all pray together. They all come together, it says, with voices to God, with one mind. And they go on to pray to you, God. And part of that prayer is, grant your servants to speak your message with great courage. And I think about that a lot, that so many Christians are already afraid of men instead of you, God. We really need that courage part to happen. We really need to be of one mind. You know, I I watch Christians tear other Christians down um, in front of non-believers. And that does nothing for our cause. Nor are they remembering what you said in Matthew about going to them privately. Um, But that courage part, God. I've never yet had to tap into the courage part because my life hasn't been threatened I should say yet on speaking out about you I have had to have some really great powerful relationships Um, I've had to learn how to be patient and calm in conversations Um, I've had to learn how to maneuver in certain situations in order so that people could hear about you My voice has been shut down numerous times through various sites. But I've never been physically threatened. And for that, I'm I'm grateful. But God, with the way the world's going, I have a feeling that we're headed there. And, And how many of the Christians call themselves Christians in America right now? How many of them are ready to have somebody come up to them and say it's it's now the law by death that you don't get to talk about Jesus anymore. How many of them are going to cave versus how many of them are going to stand boldly with courage against this? I don't know, maybe I'm misstepping, maybe it's the next generation, but it, it's still coming. And we still need to go back to your words where you promised to give us your strength, your power, your righteousness to fight whatever battle we need to here on earth. And for that, I am very thankful. There's nothing to fear. I just love you. 
In your son's name I pray. Amen.